Hi, my name is Brian English, a Wappler forum named Hyperbytes. In this module, we're going to look at how to deal with the security login, but with reference to the fact that the account itself may not have been authorized because they haven't entered, entered that authorization code that is required. So we start with where we left off with our straightforward login. So you log in, first thing we need to know is uh, who's logged in. At the moment, we're either throwing back a 401 unauthorized response if the login details are correct or the 200 OK response will be returned otherwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another step. What we're going to do is we're going to find out who was just logged in. And this is something that you haven't come across yet in our security provider. We're going to go into security identity. What this does, if we look back, we've logged in and our security provider was a community web security provider. In this stage, what we say is, with reference to community web provider, what was the identity, that unique ID of the user who has just logged in? And we can give it a name here. I'm just going to leave it as identity one. I'm perfectly happy with that. We know that definitely somebody's logged in or we wouldn't have got past this uh, security login stage at there. So what we need to do now is to actually get the credentials of that person who's just logged in, their user account. So we're going to use a database single query because obviously that uh, there can only be one person in each account. We're going to go to our query builder and we're just going to ask for it to look in the user table. We actually only want the validated column. We don't need the rest. Let's not bandy them about. And our condition is that the user ID is equal to the ID that was returned by that security identifier stage. So if, in, if it was user 12, for instance, then identity one would have returned user 12. And it would then give us the validated date for that particular user. So all we need to do now is look at add a condition. Our condition is going to be um, is the date filled in basically. Now that's actually a bit of a dates are always a bit of a pain to work with. Um, all you really need to know at this stage at node is that either that um, date that validate field will return a valid date or that will return an empty string. So the easiest way to detect whether that validated date has been updated is simply to ask for the length of the string. And if the length of the string is less than one, in other words, zero, because I tend not, I tend to prefer less thans rather than, sorry, wrong, wrong thing there. Uh, length is less than one, you could use equal zero as well. I've just, for many, many years, I've preferred doing this. So less than one. I think that the, the reason I do that is always thinking, well, what's going to happen if a null is returned um, as opposed to an empty string? We know that if it's going to return a zero anyway, probably, so we're absolutely fine anyway. So we check that. Basically, if that is less than one then that means that we know that the authorization has not been completed and then we're going to use a different response code here we're going to send a 403 which is a forbidden response status 403 we don't really need the text but i like filling it in anyway so now we know that we'll get a 401 response if it's unauthorized. We'll get a 200 response still if we get if everything's fine because there's no errors there. Or we will get a 403 response forbidden. And that means this person has legitimately logged into the system. However, they have not yet confirmed their account. So if we save that now. We can actually deal with that in our login screen. We have our error authorized and success events and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to add another one i'm going to pick up this forbidden response and in the event of a forbidden response we are going to 
go to and we're going to go to that validate account page internal validate account so now we have a couple of potential actions here I'm just looking that seems to be something very weird suddenly appeared in those fields never mind we'll soon find out if all is well it's because I'm going to fire that up we've got two accounts on this at the moment um, Brian at Hyperbytes co.uk eight ones I'm going to stick a two on the end that means we've got unauthorized that's great that's what we want that, that password should be correct but the account is not validated so it's taken us to the validate account screen and if we go back and now do admin at brianenglish.co.uk and we've got we've got a typo I think I've just put a comma in there by the looks of it rather than the dot our login no because that's not what we should have there that would be a far more sensible way of doing it and that one has been confirmed so that one's gone to the home page and we can double check that action because I do like to always check logic let's have a look at that users table let's have a look at the data what we should find is that Brian at has still not been validated but admin at which is the one we used has been validated so that appears to bear out the um, data that we just put in so that conf shows you how we are going to confirm so we're going to deal with an unfirmed confirmed account we are going to insist that they do confirm the account we've now got to look at one more thing um, in that what happens if they have not received a code or forgotten the code or accidentally deleted the code we're going to have to give them the opportunity to ask to have that code sent another time and that's the module we're looking at next